um, I see Mr. Daryl Keith Harris <laughs> um, in the lounge. So I'm going to invite him in right now while we wait for Mr. Dorsey. So, Mr. Daryl Keith Harris, go ahead. Let me introduce him. I'm, I'm first, I'm going to start with Patricia Kelly. When I first met her, she was just one of them. She impressed me as, just about as much as anybody can. Now we'll get to Reginald T. Dorsey. He's basically an actor, a producer, promoter, a director, cowboy, and he can shoot horses. <laughs> He's been a very close friend, somebody like. I want to say who I look up to, except for the fact that he's listening. <laughs> but he is somebody who, who I've looked up to. I've admired his work for, for, for many years in both areas, as far as equestrian or film. You know, he's pretty highly respected. He, he, he deserved that in both areas, which is why I recommended him, because I felt somebody like him who has the recognition that he has to further the cause. So after that, I'm going to actually let him talk. Thank you. It was good seeing You're you welcome. back later. Thank you so much. It was. You're welcome. You guys have Darryl. a good day. Hey, Daryl. Yes, the sir. Yes, the yes, check's sir. in the mail. The check's in the mail. Please hurry it up because the strike is killing me. <laughs> I, I want to have it there. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, love you, man. Mr. Dorsey, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. How are you doing today? I'm well. I'm Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the wonderful poet girl, Ronnie, told me to look you up when she saw some of the things that I was working on. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to meet her um, in L.A. during the Black Girl Art Show. She okay. was with me. Um, and it was my very first time vending and showing my artwork. And I had come from Atlanta. And she kind of just saw me and scooped me up under her wing. And she took care of me the entire night. Um, and she told me, look up my brother. Look, look him up. He's good. He's good. He's amazing. So I'm so glad we finally got the chance to share space with one, one another. And I wanted to just get a little bit of information as far as like what you are working on and um, just let the people know so that they can continue to follow you and you can just be cemented as the legend that you are. Oh, that's, that's very kind of you. Uh, currently I'm working on a strike. <laughs> you know, we got a lot of bit. Talk a little bit more about that, of what you guys are uh, you know, our backs have been up against the wall for quite some time as actors and, and writers and what have you. And, um, you know, to make a long, long story short, we just want a piece of the pie. That's all, just a fair cut of the pie. Studios have been getting paid off the backs of writers and actors forever. And, uh, you know, as studio executive salaries continue to go up, um, ours, you know, pretty much stay at a minimum level. Uh, unless you're a quote unquote star. And uh, it, it's time that everybody get a chance to eat. You know, that's really what it's about. And now with the um, onslaught of AI coming into the future, um, you know, we basically want to protect our images and, uh, and be compensated for them. In addition to the fact that, you know, there's streaming platforms out there that didn't exist, you know, some years ago. And we we definitely want a piece of that pie as well, and uh, we deserve it. You know that's really the bottom line. And so, as long as it takes, we will continue to strike. We will continue to stay strong, and uh, you know do what has to be done. As a friend of mine was saying yesterday, you know actors are used to not having jobs, so it's the studio executives are the ones that need to be worried because once you know projects start to slow down. Uh, the ball's in their court. So, you know, we'll sit and wait it out and uh, do what we have to do to keep the pressure on and make sure that everybody gets a chance to, uh, you know, have some sense of fair compensation. Absolutely. Now, that's amazing. And I, I really hope that 
soon you all will find some resolution because you should be rewarded for all the work that you've done and you yeah. should be in compensated fairly. Right, right, right. You know, uh, I've been in the game a long time and um, I don't consider myself a star or anything like that. You know, I leave that for other people to determine, but uh, I'm a journeyman actor, you know, and I do everything else as far as the producing and the directing as I've often said, so that I simply can act. Um, that is my first passion. As much as I do love everything else, but uh, you know, my acting career is what gave me the foundation to launch from. And so, uh, you know, I stay true, the, true to that from day one. Yes. So in combining acting and horses, how did that work out for you? I'm a third generation African-American cowboy. Uh, my grandfather was a cowboy. His sons were cowboys. And uh, one of my uncles in particular, uh, his name was Uncle Wardell. He had a, um, a summer camp that he used to run outside of Dallas. And um, from as, as far back as I can remember, you know, I was always out there with him during the summer uh, as a child. And he eventually started putting putting me up on horses when he would go feed them. And um, the rest is history. You know, it, it's in my blood. It's something that I've always had a passion for. I remember being in the first grade. Um, you know, I, I would daydream. I would see horses passing by my school and the teacher would be talking and I'd be drawing pictures of horses and stuff. So, you know, that's as far back as my passion goes. And uh, it has never waned. I'm still just as passionate about horses and uh, their well-being and the concern of what's going on today uh, with animal extremists. I don't know if you guys are dealing with that in Connecticut or not, but we've been getting hit with uh, rodeos trying to be uh, eliminated here in Los Angeles, um, as well as a, a few other states. So we've been fighting that, you know, with the uh, LA City Council. And uh, there's an organization called Western Justice. If, you're, if you uh, are not a member or if your organization wants to become a member, just Google Western Justice. Because if any one of these measures uh, gets a foothold, then it's going to spread. You know, and our job is to protect our interest as far as horse-loving people, cowboys, cowgirls, uh, ranchers and farmers, um, you know, because they're getting misinformation about how we treat our animals and, you know, what we believe in as far as rodeos are concerned and things of that nature. I mean, the average animal in a rodeo takes eight seconds uh, uh, of, of work, you know, and then he's in the back eating for the rest of the time and getting the well care that he needs because he's an investment to these ranchers. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the information is just being misconstrued or just basically lied about um, in terms of how these animals are treated. And we want to continue to get, to get the positive information out there about how everybody that I know and that I love and care for as part of this lifestyle, you know, um, they do the utmost to take care of the animals. And so I just want to see that the proper information get out there. Again, the name of the organization that's fighting against all of these bills and, and potential bills is called Western Justice. So please uh, get the information out. And as you continue to read more about it, you'll see the measures that we've been up against. Um, and not just here in California, Oregon and other places. So just, just be mindful of that. Because uh, like I said, if it happens to one of us in one of these cities, it has the potential to spread. So, Absolutely. so that's how I got started with horses. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and the, the continued dedication over the years, that's amazing. So continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, um, they basically saved my life uh, in Hollywood. Um, they've given me something to, to look forward to uh, when I wasn't working. Um, I train horses and I teach uh, a couple of days out of the week when I have a spare time. And one of the biggest principles that I teach to my students is how much what they learn from horses will help them in their everyday life. Things such, as, things such as loyalty, giving of yourself, uh, overcoming fear, um, 
standing your ground and being confident in what you believe in and overcoming obstacles. All of these things you learn from horses. You know, um, when a lot of my students start, they don't want to pick up a horse's hoof, you know, and they want to jump back when they feel that jerk, you know, when the horse doesn't want to give them the foot. And it's just beautiful to see over a period of time them start to build up confidence and they get in there and handle it like, you know, they've been doing it every day. Yeah. And so I, I, I love seeing the growth. Um, it, it makes me joyous in my heart because, uh, you know, I feel like a proud daddy or something uh, to just watch them grow within a six month period. And especially the women, you know, because I'm going to be honest with you. Some of you guys can come in with a lot of fear yeah, I, I see that look on your face. <laughs> but but as my students will tell you, I worked that out real quick. <laughs> you know, so um, I, I just, you know, again, I, I love giving that to people, um, that part of my life, because I know what it's contributed to me personally. And um, again, again, it's helped me overcome challenges and it's helped me to, uh, maintain a sense of self. Um, and then I grew up, you know, in Texas with a certain set of values mm -hmm. that um, gave me a foundation that I would never waver from. You know, I had that early on in life, and that was dealing with horses as well. Um, you know, when you see something that you need to accomplish with a horse, and the two of you work in tandem, there's no other beauty beautiful uh, experience that you can have in life, you know, to know that your horse is giving himself to you and you're giving yourself to your horse and you're becoming one in spirit. And, um, you know, I was, I was told at a rodeo that I was in once by this young lady who came up to me after. And she said, you know, watching you ride a horse is, is a spiritual experience because she could get that the horse and I, we had bonded and that our souls had intertwined and we were connected, you know, and uh, um, it's just something that, that, again, if you've never had the experience, if you've never been around horses, take advantage of it while you can, or if there's a place where you can go to take advantage of it, please do, because they'll teach you a lot about yourself. And uh, I think a lot of things that are worth learning, you know, while we're here on earth, um, they're very spiritual animals, you know, and they sense certain things. And they will tell you things about yourself that you may not have even been aware of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to go back. You said, and you're touching on it, but if I may, you said horses saved your life. Mm -hmm. Can you expound upon that a little bit? Um, if you, want to. you know, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Whereas um, a lot of my friends, friends that I came up with in the business, um, you know, for lack of work, for lack of opportunity, a lot of them got caught up into the wrong things, you know, drugs, um, alcohol, um, you know, mental issues. And for me, always having horses, I always had something to do to eliminate the void, you know. Um, I always had something to do to keep my mind, my spirit occupied, to keep me work, working, to keep me motivated. Um, and a lot of these guys didn't have it, you know. And so when I teach kids, it's the same thing. If you give them a good foundation to, to, to work from, I don't care if they stray, they will eventually come back to it, you know, because it has that type of, 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 of yearning that draws you back. And that's the spirit and nature of horses. Um, a kid that, that I'm like a father to, um, I used to take him to summer camp at like 11, 12 years old. And, uh, you know, he went and got out in the streets and, 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 you know, he didn't do anything too bad, but he was just out there, you know, going through the growth and, and the growing pains that kids go through. And, uh, I got a call from him recently at the Bill Pickett Rodeo that I was getting ready to uh, participate in. 
And uh, he asked me, could he come out and, and be a part of it and hang with me and stuff. And, you know, that was over a couple of months ago. And, um, you know, God, God he, he sees things, you know, and uh, he prepares you for certain things. He sends you, you signs and messages. And this kid who's like a son to me, you know, I used to change his diapers when he was a baby. That's, that's as far back as I go. <laughs> with him and uh, his mom and I dated years ago, you know. But um, a couple weeks ago, after spending time with me out at the ranch, um, we got news that his mom had died. And so, you know, for him now, he's had something to do throughout that process. And I've been there not even knowing that this situation was gonna take place, but he was kind of led in that direction and so, you know, our bond has, has gotten even stronger as a result of what he's been going through. And uh, I'm just happy that, you know, the great spirit led him to me um, and that, you know, I, I could be there as a, um, as a shoulder for him to lean on now. And that, you know, he could continue his process and his growth as a young man and uh, know that there are people around him that support him and that he's got some horses to love on now. Yeah. Yes. What would you say to black equestrian to young black equestrians to keep them engaged? Um, study the history. Mm -hmm. You know, start there. Um, study the history of African American cowboys and cowgirls. You know, uh, it's a rich history that has not been often shared um, in history books. And when it has been done, in my humble opinion, as far as films go, most often it hasn't been done right. Um, you know, but, but start there and the wonders of, of who we are and what we were able to accomplish during the most um, treacherous of times in American history, um, it'll give you strength. You know, it'll give you something to be inspired by. And um, we, have, we have some heroes, we have some icons that need their just due. Um, we need to appreciate the strength and the struggle of what they went through. Um, because without them, we wouldn't be here today. Um, I, I see people oftentimes talking about, you know, oh, I don't wanna see another slave movie, you know, I'm sick of that, that's in the past and blah, blah, blah. Well, look at it from this perspective. They were heroes, you know, they were soldiers. They lived long, long enough to push your DNA forward so that you'd even have a life today. So don't disrespect them or dishonor them by just referring to them as simply a slave. No, they weren't slaves, they were enslaved. And there's a difference. And, you know, long before we were shackled in, cha in chains. We had our own land. We had our own kings and queens. And acknowledge that. Acknowledge that they, because of that blood, that it gave us the strength to be here today and for them to go whatever they had to go through and to endure whatever they had to go through. Um, you know, so we need to be more conscious of, of how we refer to them and uh, acknowledge the love, the commitment, and the strength that they had to just simply survive another day, you know, so that we could be here. And um, a lot of the films that are being done about that particular topic today are being done by people who are conscious, and they are, they are writing our narrative into those stories, mm -hmm. where we are the ones taking control of our own destiny in terms of freedom. And... Um, so for you to just simply cast a shadow over it and just say, oh, it's another slave film, you need to do more research and you need to be uh, more respectful of the, um, the ancestors. Definitely. Going back to <laughs> Mrs. Kelly is yelling at me in the chat. She wants me to ask, and you touched on it a little bit, um, ask about the recognition of Black equestrians in the horse industry. Can you talk a little bit about that? 
in the past and current? Well, most of the recognition as far as, um, you know, black cowboys are concerned comes from within our own uh, associations, um, whether it's the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo. Um, I was inducted into the National Western Heritage Museum last year um, in, in Fort Worth, Texas. And um, some of the members that are in there are Charlie Sampson, um, Sidney Poitier, who was, re who was inducted posthumously when I got inducted, Hare Belafonte also, um, Fred Whitfield, uh, uh, you know, and again, these are like phenomenal cowboys. I'm talking about Fred Whitfield, Charlie Sampson, um, Murtis Dightman, you know, those are the people that, that if you just read a little bit about them, you know, it'll open up a world of history and a world of, of, of courage and respect for you um, in terms of what these people had to overcome and, um, you know, how, how we continue to overcome those obstacles. But yes, we are definitely respected amongst our peers in these different areas. Um, some of us have gotten recognition outside of that. Um, I'm in a book now called the um, um, Black Cowboys from, Holly, from Harlem to Hollywood. Yes. And um, yeah, it's a number of us that are in that book. And uh, it's, it's, it's a great read. You'll learn a lot of history about contemporary African-American cowboys who are still doing it. And, uh, you know, so it, the information is there. And we have to continue to support each other, as always, and uplift even when others don't. Um, yeah. But it's not that, that, you know, we're being shunned or not getting the recognition. It's just getting it in the proper uh, areas, you know, that we deserve it. Um, and, and again, for me, I've been a, um, a grand marshal for the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo for the last 37 years, along with Glenn Turman, Oba Baba Tunde, and James Pickens Jr. So we do a lot to keep the word out there. and. Uh, you know, it's it's important that that not only we get the recognition, but also that we continue to to support up and coming young cowboys and cowgirls too, to let them know that there's a another sport out there that they can have an opportunity to make money at, and have a lifestyle. Um, you know, if they continue to dedicate themselves to it. Um, and I don't want to mess up the name of the museum that I was in conducted to last year because it's a long one but i will go for it again it is the national western heritage it is the, the national let me look this up <laughs> it's the national heritage. that's what happens when it you is the national guys. Huh? <laughs> that's what happens when icon guys <laughs> <laughs> it is the national western heritage diversity museum and if I messed it up, you can look it up and Google it. But I was so honored to be a part of it. And um, they showed a lot of love. And there's a lot of great cowboys and cowgirls that are part of it. The Western Heritage, the Western, National Western Heritage Museum. Look that up. Let's start there. Okay. All right. So last question. Or not last question. I don't know. We'll see. What was is the greatest lesson that you've learned as a horseman? Hmm. It's sort of twofold. Commitment and never giving up. Yeah. Um, you know, again, horses require that you do things that you may not necessarily want to get up and do. So that takes commitment. You know, if it's raining outside, if it's snowing outside, and you know they got to eat, you got to get up and go handle it. You know, there's no, well, I don't feel like doing it today. I don't care if you're sick. You got to go out there and do it, you know. Or if your horse goes down, you got to go out there and tend to it and make sure that it's it's getting the proper care and, um, you know, the the necessary medicines that it might need. If a horse is 
say, for instance, colicking, you know. I mean, I've spent time, you know, out with my horses 24 hours, no sleep, you know, making sure that they stayed up on their feet, you know, if they collect. And, um, you know, getting the right medicines and understanding the right things that, that they need to have in order to uh, continue to stay healthy. So those are just some of the requirements that, uh, that horses demand of you. And, you know, again, the, um, the, the never giving up part, you know, um, horses demand that of you. And it's not always in the prettiest of ways. You know, it's not always going to be, you know, because they're having such a great attitude today that you know they're gonna demand that that you never give up and no it's 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 not that you know they're gonna challenge you yes. you know and they might back you up against the wall on some days <laughs> you know depending on on where you are in the training process mm -hmm. and uh, you know so you got to cross that river regardless yes uh, if there, if there is to be a relationship you know and so you take that relationship into your everyday life's relationships. I don't care whether it's with your mate, with your friends, you know, it requires uh, you to show up. And it requires, if you love that enough, it's gonna require for you to make the adjustments that are necessary in order to, to continue having that situation in your life, you know, that love in your life, so. Thank you, Mr. Dorsey. Thank you for taking the time again to talk to me and just sharing a bit of your story. And I could really keep you on here forever because you're amazing. Um, but again, you were nominated for one, for one of our Black Boots Awards. So <laughs> save the dates, May 24th, May 25th, and May 26th of 2024 are the Black X the Black Boots Awards uh, 2024 experience. And thank you again for taking the time to talk to me. And I just love your work and continue to stay strong while, you know, Hollywood is striking right now and continue to stand in your power. And thank you for everything that you continue to do. I appreciate you too, Danny, and everything that you guys are doing. And I appreciate everything that you guys are doing in support of African-American cowboys and cowgirls. And uh, just keep up the good work, Thank you know. You. And if there's any any way that I can be of assistance, I'm just a phone call away. Thank you so much.